one. And let's get going here in game number two. Very, very early in the action in game number two. These players at seven and two. Seven and two here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series featuring the Invitational in Indianapolis, Indiana. Ricky Hayashi and Adrian Sullivan here in the booth. Okay. Nauseum tendrils. So this ad nauseum tendrils build featuring dark ritual, cabal ritual, and lotus petal. So this is the the pure black yep. splashing for red only, really you're, for past and flames. You're not, not going to see any right of flames in this list. Yep. But the big key for this deck, as it is named after, is that ad nauseum. You want to make a bunch of mana for ad nauseum and then draw a whole bunch of cards. Go off with that. You could see in Kenta's hand as he uh, flipped it around a rest in peace. These players have sideboarded. And rest in peace, very effective against Cabal Ritual by making it only barely produce mana. What and it not a, not also to be um, left unmentioned. Past in flames not so good against rest in peace. Oh, carpet of flowers! Carpet of flowers is one of my favorite cards in Magic. A green mana for an enchantment. During your turn, you get to make a number of colors of mana equal to the islands they have. So here he gets one mana from Kenta Hiroki that he can have of any color he chooses. This is a really great way to overpower a blue deck with their I mana. Yeah. So this has a very oh, weird trigger. The actual Oracle text mentions stuff about uh, your first, the first main phase where you haven't gotten mana off of Carpet of Flowers. They didn't want you to be able to get mana in both of your main phases. So yeah, maybe some discussion here about what mana Jack Fogle got. So he got blue mana. Blue mana to cast Brainstorm, and now he's going to sculpt his hand a little further. Yeah, if you haven't played against Carpet of Flowers, it's actually a really frightening card when you are a blue base deck. So often in Legacy, a lot of the counter magic are things like Spell Pierce and Daze, and it makes those very, very hard to be nearly as effective. But also, more importantly, a lot of these decks that are kind of a storm style deck or other combo style decks, if they get a little bit of extra mana, it's basically like extra land drops. So, yeah. I mean, Jack Fogel, he's getting the, all of the land drops that his opponent gets. The interesting thing here is that Kenta Hiroki missed his second land drop. I don't believe he has a second land in his hand. It's maybe possible that he didn't play it on purpose. Uh, he... So very important for his deck now with Carpet of Flowers on the board, he has four Wastelands in his deck, and then he has uh, nine, no, sorry, eight Fetchlands. So those Fetchlands, going to want to keep those in play for a while unless he absolutely needs the mana for them to deny Jack Fogel mana, because all of his mana, colored mana producing lands are technically islands, tundras yep. and volcanics. He does have seven, oh. uh, seven island variants. And that's... That could be a tough draw, the Volcanic Island. Obviously, he wants mana, but now, Carpet of Flowers. Yep, Jack Fogel, next turn, will have access to five mana. That's <laughs> so much. Ouch. Well. And look at that right. hand, though. I mean, Force of Will times players. two, Stifle. Yeah. And he hits the rest in peace, clears the graveyards. Stand up and abrupt decay immediately person. gets rid of the rest in peace. Mm -hmm. I'm for yeah, yeah so rest in peace is removed exiled. from the game. Abrupt decay is not. Very important, yeah, for any future threshold possibilities or the possibility of flashing it back. So Jack Fogel wanted to get rid of that rest in peace because first off, it's going to cut him off from his uh, Cabal right, Rituals right, going right. big with Threshold and also Past in Flames, oh, very key to this pleasure. deck to keep the chain going. Now Jack Your Fogel has one of my favorite combos in Magic, Getaxian Probe Cabal Therapy. Yeah, Cabal Therapy, if you don't know the card, one of my favorite discard cards of all time, Black Sorcery, name a card. 
opponent reveals their hand and discards all copies of that named card. Yeah, if you have the soul read, it's fantastic, or if you look at their hand, it's fantastic. We'll see if Jack wants to look or just take a blind stab. We see, we see that uh, Kenta Hiroki does have Force of Will in his hand, and that would be my suspect for one of the, the top things Jack would want to name in this matchup to help him go off. So discussing, he Jack Fogel points to the carpet of flowers there. I'm not sure what happened. Welcome to the Indianapolis Standard Open. We All right, Jataxian Probe, as you said, he's going to pay mana off his tropical island. Which means we will play ten. That's a double force of will. Yeah. Double stifle, Geist of St. Traftan. Very interesting hand. This event uses the modified plating draw All right. rule for its draw for Jataxian Pro. There's Cabal Therapy for you guys, as Adrian was saying. Now that flashback ability, very, very powerful if you have creatures of any kind. No creatures. And there here. are no creatures. He's not actually planning on flashing it back. With Cabal Therapy, even if you don't know your opponent's hand, usually what you do is you name what you fear. Yeah. You say, I don't really care about actually hitting your hand appropriately. I care about what actually matters. Do you have it? Okay, you don't have it. Well, then I'm going to go off. Yeah, what percentage of the time for an Ad Nauseam Tendrils deck do you just name Force of Will anyway if they have blue mana sources? A, a fairly large percent. I mean, after sideboard, there are times where you may name something like Fluster Storm, I guess. We will not adjust for a so he's already seen Kenta's hand with the Jataxian Probe. Don't, we don't name until resolution the spell, but Kenta knows what's going to happen, so he has to force of will this Cabal Therapy. And it looks like yeah, Jack Fogel cast that therapy off of his Carpet of Flowers mana. And now he's going to commit the Geist of St. Traff to the board to put Jack Fogel on a clock while still having Force of Will with the Stifle in his hand. Now this Geist of St. Traff represents a three turn clock, two power plus a four power angel can end a game very quickly. And Kenta Hiroki for his third land drew another Tundra. So he would have liked to have drawn a Wasteland in order to cast that Geist but has to give Jack three mana this judges, turn for Carpet of Flowers. Looks like we're having an Infernal Tutor uh, brought in Thank you, to the top. To be on this event. Let's give them a round of if you're just joining us, you're hearing the beginning of the standard open in the background. Yeah, we, we thought it would be huge. It is a big tournament, but not ginormously big. I believe the number I heard was 699. That's actually still 10 rounds, Adrian. Woo! <laughs> I'm not quite sure where the 11 round cut is, but it's somewhere in the 700s. So still a fantastic turnout for Indianapolis. I believe that is the second largest open in Indianapolis and either the third or fourth largest open in the history of the Open Series. Kenta Hiroki has drawn Meddling Mage. Ooh. Now, Meddling Mage, an incredible card right now. He comes in for four, two plus four for six damage. Yep. Looks like he indicated the angel token trigger and was just looking for the appropriate token. Then and he can cast Meddling Mage and name whatever is scary. Meddling Mage, much like Cabal Therapy, it actually, in my opinion, doesn't matter if you hit the right card. I mean, in terms of the cards in your opponent's hand, so much as it matters that you name what you're afraid of. Yeah. What are the things you don't want to see happen? What do you not want to see happen here if you're Kenta Hiroki? Please Just ad nauseum. Uh, Infernal Tutor, ad nauseum. Those are the two that come to mind. Or does he know about possi any possible sideboard cards that Jack Fogel might bring in? Maybe some Next. kind of sweeper effect he might be afraid Take of? One like a pyroclasm? Sure I feel like the ad nauseum, like um, it's a card that you eventually get to in this deck. But after sideboarding, a deck like Jack's usually has access to some kind of answers to a permanent. Yeah. So I feel like Infernal Tutor would be the card I would probably name. We've already seen the Abrupt Decay. 
So passing the turn back to Jack Fogel. And he is going to, well, we're pointing to Carpet of Flowers there. Maybe asking what color you got. And Jack Fogel, a very full hand. You can see all of those lion's eye diamonds lined up along the side. Tendrils of Agony, the finisher card, typically for this deck, is what was named. Taxi Pro sees those very same Force of Will Stifle that we've known about for a couple of turns. Yep, and Jack has known about it too. Yeah, he's um, just cycling. Judges, please collect deathless. As judges Digging are further, please trying to win this players. match. He won game one. We joined the action at the players. very beginning of game two. Let the judges collect the list. Meddling Mage, naming Tendrils of Agony. And he fetches up an underground sea. So you asked what, you, you name what you're afraid of. Yeah, ad nauseum, past and flames, these are cards that can enable the combo, but the combo is really just tendrils of agony. And even just casting some number of dark rituals into a tendrils of agony can be dangerous. And if you look at Jack Fogel's hand, oh, here he is. Look at that, it's, it's started. He's got a lion's eye diamond times one. Oh, and he passes it back. All right, Kenta Hiroki Please now, meddling mage, and Geist of St. Trapped on the board. Four damage there, four more for the Angel. So this is a very short clock. Jack Fogel has one more turn to do something. And Kenta Hiroki has drawn another meddling mage. Oh, wow. At this point, the second meddling mage might name something like a, a removal spell, like Massacre, like Chain of Vapor, like Abrupt Decay. Yeah, he has seen the Abrupt Decay earlier. You can see the original art there over on the left. That is Chris Pakula, the Invitational winner, back uh, with uh, the original Magic the Gathering Invitationals. The top players in the world would be invited to play Magic, mm -hmm. and uh, their likeness, the winner, would be put onto a Magic card. And I remember the last of these, they opened it up um, the last couple of years, and uh, our own Evan Irwin played in one of the Invitationals. He did. He did not win. He did not get his likeness on a card. Some people jokingly say that that's why they stopped giving out cards. They oh brought my. Evan in. Well, I don't a think lighthearted poking there. <laughs> I don't think that's true. And as Adrian mentioned, meddling mage Chris Pakula. The real cool thing is Chris Pakula now owns the original art for this card. Infernal Tutor, the card named. Infernal Tutor, uh, I think a really great name. I would have named it with the first... Um, the first meddling with mage. Now now collected, Here we go. Well, Jack has to do have something. To go yeah. for it. Preordain, scry two. We see a duress, and I believe we also see a, it might be a brainstorm. It's hard to tell from that angle. Could be a chain of vapor as well. You can see the infernal tutor hanging out in Jack Fogel's hand, unable to be cast. Yeah, that chain of it. So how do you have to sequence this? It's very hard. Tendrils of Agony, named with the first meddling mage. You see there that's tapped. It attacked. There's a brainstorm. An Infernal Tutor, named with the second. That really cuts Jack off from doing much here. Even if he's brought in a singleton answer, like Chain of Vapor, does he have anything like Echoing Truth? He's got Massacre. Okay, so... From the sideboard, the sideboard cards, three Abrupt Decays, three Chain of Vapors, one Massacre. Massacre, the only one that deals with both meddling mages. And Jack sees the writing on the wall, did not find the Massacre. Scoops it up. And very important here might be f to not let Kenta Hiroki know that he's got access to Massacre. Two meddling mages for Kenta's sideboard. Those are the only two copies in his sideboard. Dry draws them in a timely fashion there to lock Jack out and even the match at one game all. Now, if Jack did not already have Massacre in his, uh, in his deck, he has certainly found some reasons to sideboard it in. One of the things about Meddling Mage, it's such a good card against narrow decks. Yeah. If your deck revolves around particular pieces fitting together, Meddling Mage awesome against that. A as most combo decks in Legacy are not that good in traditional matchups because if you name something, you name just a threat and they draw a different threat, not much happened there. You played a grizzly bear. One of the things I like um, is that Kenta Hiroki's deck 
has what I like to call the picula aspect, the peak at your opponent's hand with Gitaxian probe, and then Pecula, Chris Pecula, the meddling mage. Yep. So both players able to take advantage of Gitaxian probe. Jack with his Cabal therapy, Kenta with his meddling mage. I like that too. I like to know what I need to name. Uh, anytime I take a guess at something, I'm always wrong, Adrian. You know, just go with the old maxim, though. Don't don't try to guess what's in their hand. Just name what you fear. Name what you fear, all right. Or you could take a peek, a legal peek with a spell, <laughs> please, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Don't get banned for a few years. That yeah. would be bad. <laughs> well, the thing is, you can, you can take advantage of miscues by your opponent, like if they tip their hand a little. You just cannot go to extreme measures. So, like, standing up pretending to drop something and peek from the side. <laughs> like, you're not allowed to do that. But if your opponent Sitting just on your chair so that you're up, like, high yeah, in your chair. Yeah, that okay. is something that I have heard about happening. <laughs> I've got back problems. I've got back problems. <laughs> but if your opponent is just sitting there across from you and they lean, lean over to, you know, do something or look at one of your cards and they show you some of their hand, that's fine. You don't have to, you know, it may be the honorable thing to do to look away or say, hey, you know, don't show me your hand but you're not required to. Okay, looking at these hands. Jack Fogel on the left, We've Kenta Hiroki on the right. These players playing a game three here, both at seven and two, hoping to continue onwards towards the top portions of the field. Neither of them will be out of the running should they lose, but uh, you know, it's never fun to be so high towards the standings and then pick up a loss late in the late in the event. Yeah, we have a question from Twitter as to whether it's ten rounds or eleven rounds in the standard open. It's we announced a total of six hundred and ninety nine players, and SFK says six hundred and seventy three for eleven rounds, twelve uh, forty eight for twelve rounds. I'm not sure the math breaks down it, it starts off as powers of two right 8 16 32 128 um, at the 10 round break it really for some reason it breaks down I'm not sure if that's because of draws or what uh, they have the information over there at the standard open they know what they're doing and we will find out later how long that tournament is still a fantastic turnaround well, and thank you for the comment super fluffy kitty we appreciate it too. Now make sure that you get involved in the conversation on Twitter at SCG Live. Um, it is going to be a ten-round tournament, says our director. Okay. Well, that's that's what they're saying over there. They've got the math. They've got all of the formulas. Ten and rounds uh, for standard. Yeah, get involved in the conversation. Follow us on Twitter at SCG Live and hashtag SCG Envy. One of the things I really love about being on Twitter when I'm watching an event, when I'm a part of an event, is going to that hashtag and seeing how people are doing. So, for example, if you were following the hashtag SCG Envy, you would know that Cedric Phillips is currently 6-3-1 and, and that he just lost to a number of engineered plagues and... Uh, that was what took out the goblins this last round. Yeah, Cedric Phillip. We saw last round Max Teets traditionally on goblins playing blue, white, red Delver. Jim Davis and Cedric Phillips staying true to the tribe with their goblin decks. And here we go, back to the action. Game number three. We start out with a Gitaxian probe. Look at that. Sword of Feast and Famine, Lightning Bolt, Stifle, Scalding Tarn, Brainstorm, Force of Will, and Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, I'm going to write these cards down as is Jack Fogel. Wait, I need to see. Oh, he picked them up. What was that last card? The white card. Stoneforge. Okay, I got them all down, Adrian. Excellent. I got to work on my shorthand there. Make some nicknames for these cards. Like John, Billy. Yeah, Stoneforge Mystic is now John. Actually, I think it's a woman, so <laughs> Jane. <laughs> okay, Kenta Hiroki now the... The uh, jig is up. Jack knows his hand. Plays the Scalding Tarn first. And now that he's seen Carpet of Flowers, better to keep that fetch there land uncracked to potentially deny Jack extra mana. 
We'll see if he needs that. We see already that he has drawn his ad nauseum. It's a singleton in these decks. They get tutored up by Infernal Tutor. Kenta Hiroki fetches at the end of Jack's turn here, finds a Tundra. And he can only find islands. Important because Jack Fogel has brought in Carpet of Flowers from the sideboard. And I see a Wear Tear in Kenta Hiroki's deck. He apparently sided Wear Tear in. We see end of turn Brainstorm, which responds Jack Fogel end of turn Brainstorm. End of Jack Fogel's turn. Gonna take the opportunity with the shields down. And Jack Fogel's Brainstorm here is a much better library manipulation spell than Kenta Hiroki's because Jack Fogel will be able to shuffle away um, up to two cards that he wants to get rid of. And Kenta Hiroki, on the other hand, will not be able to shuffle away two cards because Kenta will have to put two back and then draw a card on his own turn. So he'll only be able to shuffle away one card with his own Brainstorm. Yeah, he only had the one land when we looked with Jitaxian Pro. His draw step has given him a wasteland, so he does have a second land. So that brainstorm, not necessary here at this point, as you're saying. He can still make a second land drop. And then maybe possibly have gone for a main phase brainstorm, you think? Would that have been well, better? Well, I mean, I think he was looking to cast Stoneforge Mystic on turn two. And so he viewed this as, uh, you know, make sure that the land is there and make sure that I can cast the Stoneforge Mystic on turn two and have already done some work with mm -hmm. library manipulation. And then shuffle one card away with the Stoneforge. So he's going to put it, put the Stoneforge on top to draw it on his next turn and then cast it. And the Stoneforge Mystic, he saw that the Sword of Feast and Famine was put on top as well. And maybe he'll search it out. So that's a very good use of the okay. Brainstorm. He had the Stoneforge and the Sword of Feast of Famine in his hand putting the sword back. So one of the things he does there, he searches, his out, searches it out. It's kind of funny because he grabbed it from the top, put it into his deck, shuffled it a little bit, and then grabbed it from the center of his deck. Perhaps maybe he thought maybe Jack uh, he would not be, would, would think that there might be two swords that way. Hmm. It's the only thing that you get from doing that is by pantomiming that there's a second sword of Feast and Famine in your deck. A little less information for Jack, even though Jack is likely to believe it's the sort of Feast and Famine he already saw. Yeah, with that sequence of plays, you, you would have to think that your opponent did it quote-unquote correctly. Okay, Jack Fogel. Ad nauseum tendrils, Kenta Hiroki. And let's white, check out Delver. your hand again. What do you have over there? So we've added a second wasteland now. Spyfall, Day. Bolt, Days, Force of Will, Wasteland, Delver, and there's that sword. So Stifle, what's the best thing to Stifle in this matchup? Is it just well, a fetch land? Well, no, actually Stifling the Storm Trigger is one of the best things oh. you can do. Of course. See, I was going up the chain. I was thinking Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal. Can't those are mana abilities. Can't, can't stifle, stifle those. those. I hadn't gotten to the kill condition yet. I've, I have a very sequential mind that way. You can see a very powerful hand here for Jack Fogle. He, uh, he knows that his opponent has Daze and Force of Will. He's a Duress in his hand. Um, dark Ritual. It looks like a Cabal Ritual. A Past in Flames. A Past in Flames is going to be big. He's got four cards in his graveyard now. I think now. that's a Ponder, an Ad Nauseum, and I think a second Cabal Ritual. So he can he can get up to Threshold. Let's see, he's going to Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual to start. Black, Black, Black. Storm 1. All right, so I like to divide this duty up. Do you want to do Mana and I'll do Storm Count? <laughs> well, remember, he cast Gitaxian Probe okay. as well. So you're going to do Storm Count, and I'll keep track of mana. Just to double check on his math here. So he's going to... Cabal Therapy. Okay, he's down to black, black, third spell. You just want to do both, huh, Adrian? I can't not do both. Okay. <laughs> you can do them too. The magic player in you. No, I'll try to keep track of the action while you keep track of all of that information here. 
Going to come ball therapy, and he knows. He knows his whole hand. Yeah, he's seen the force of will, and he's seen the days. Names and force of will, and away it goes. There's only a days left between Jack Fogel and victory. And that has to be a good feeling for him. He has to. He's already cast his dark ritual, so he's somewhat committed. I guess he could stop at this point, but see what he comes up with here. Black, black. Uh, one, two, three, six cars in his graveyard. So not quite threshold. That may be that may be a key here because Cabal, Cabal Ritual does not go to the graveyard until after it resolves. So on the stack, it's not going to add the full five black. He does a duress now. So he's going to take the days, right? And he, he'll almost certainly take the days. This is the fourth spell of the turn. You can see that Jack Fogel is keeping track of Storm with the die. That one represents how much uh, mana he has left. Goodbye, days. And I believe we're going to see the Cabal Ritual now. Boom. Cabal Ritual at threshold. Empties out his pool. That's a lot of mana. There's the ad nauseum. Okay. Six spells thus far. And Jack Fogel at a healthy 15 life. Yeah, 15 life, very important. This spell, Ad Nauseam, is the, is the real focus of the sec. It tries to storm up, cast this spell, and then start flipping its library. 15 life still. 14. I'm counting down the life. 13 as he's dealt damage. 12. 11. Wow. A lot of ones. 10. So Jack Fogel is going to be losing life for the converted mana cost of all of these cards he's flipping over. Six. He just lost four. That's a big hit, but that's the card he wants to see. What's the storm can out now? Six on the storm and six life for Jack Fogel. So he's zero gonna, mana in pool. He's going to pause for a moment and take a, evaluate his uh, position to see if he has enough mana to go off. He, f he pulls out the Lotus Petal. He can cast that. That's a spell. Dark Ritual. Cast that. That would be eight. Fetch a land with Polluted Delta. So he needs another spell on top of that. And it doesn't look like he's quite... No, he can cast the Lion's Eye Diamond. He doesn't have to crack it for mana. Just cast it as a spell. So with the tendrils, that would be the tenth spell. It appears that he has it here. So yeah, he puts the ad nauseum into his graveyard. No need to go on further. We'll see if Kenta Hiroki says play it out or just packs it in. Gonna make him play it out. So Jack Fogel sacrifices polluted delta, gets underground sea, lotus petal, dark ritual, lion's eye diamond, tendrils of agony. There's Good the game. seventh and the eighth spell. Ninth spell. Ninth spell in the form of Dark Ritual. And ten. Tenth spell, tendrils. There you go. Handshake. Jack Fogel wins two to one versus Kenta Hiroki.